All right, okay. This morning, a special treat. Our own Willie Creaseman. Would you come up, Willie, right now? You've heard Willie before. But the cool thing is, Willie's father was a Church of Christ, or is he still a Church of Christ preacher? Well, he's not personally, but he passed away. But okay, all right. This just in. Willie's Creaser, Willie Creaseman's father was a Church of Christ preacher for a long time, 24th Street, Church of Christ in Bessemer. Okay. Willie went to Northwestern University, one of those Yankee colleges. But he did okay, came back. He has been in news management and news program management. He's worked in Boston, in Chicago, in Denver, in Detroit, and Birmingham. He somehow convinced the beautiful, the intelligent, the uh, saintly Francis Smith, now Francis Smith Creaseman, to marry him. They have produced two lovely daughters, Jessica and Samantha, the father of daughters. That is a special thing, let me tell you. All right. Please help me welcome a man who is now working on a digital media food project entitled, If You Can Chew It, You Will Enjoy It, <laughs> Willie Christman. Cook cooking tips for everyone. Thank, thank you all for allowing me to come back to this because, and I'm sure you're pretty tired of hearing from me today, so I'll try to keep this at least hopefully engaging a bit. Uh, when Russ asked me to do this session er, earlier this year, this was a subject I was going to talk to, but it was right after the election and I was kind of being affected by all the division that was going on out there and, and all the problems that we saw. So I decided to speak at that time on, on surviving the divided nation and I'm pleased to say all those problems are now solved. Uh, there is no longer reason for us to worry about the divided nation, he said facetiously. Uh, but that didn't stop me from wanting to come back and try to do this subject that, that, that I had before. Uh, what we want to talk, what I want to talk about today is uh, something that I am calling uh, a time to laugh. And what it is about is finding the funny in faith. And is there indeed funny in faith and how should we react to that? The uh, emphasis for this, oops, for this talk came obviously from Ecclesiastes, the verse that says, there is a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Growing up in the Church of Christ, we tend to overlook the last part of that, 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 that really wasn't part of what we were supposed to be doing. So we concentrated more on the other stuff and, and while we were very adept at mourning and weeping, sometimes the laughing part was lost to, to people who are in churches, I think, and this is not just the Church of Christ, but churches everywhere. But I want to argue that there is room for laughter in our lives, and there is room for a sense of humor, and there is room to enjoy life and enjoy the joy of life. <clears throat> uh, much of what we do and what we think about when it comes to funny in relation to our faith comes from how it relates to our spiritual feelings and what we believe. But sometimes it's it just is fun sometimes just to look at things in a different way. And I want to share this video with you to start the conversation. And it would be great if there was audio for it, <laughs> which there was early, because otherwise this would be a very boring conversation. That's, 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 that should be Moses. Stand by.
technology can be an ugly, ugly thing. Uh, we heard this audio earlier today, and now we don't have it. There's nobody in the booth, so I think we're just going to have to wing it. Yes, it's on YouTube. That there are very few species out there that have the ability to laugh. Uh, from what I understand, apes can do it, chimpanzees can do it, dolphins can do it, even rats can do it, which kind of surprised me, but it made Mickey Mouse and Tom and Jerry make a lot more sense to me when I found that out. But there's, there are those elements of, of that in the species in the world, but nobody can laugh and enjoy laughter like humans can. And I believe that's a gift from God and one that we should keep in mind as we think about that. We see laughter as an expression of joy. There is happiness. Uh, if you, depending upon which version you look at, there are about 200 references to joy in the Bible. Uh, there are about a quarter of those numbers refer to laughter in the Bible. So it's there. It's a biblical concept, and it's one that we should take advantage of and one that we should feel good about. Uh, I think that it's important for us to kind of keep in mind, though, that uh, as we have these expressions of joy, like with anything and with any emotion, there are good things about it and there are bad things about it. There are times when, it can, when humor can be cutting, when it can be hurtful, when it can be malicious. Uh, and those are bad under any circumstances. But if there are opportunities to lift people up and bring them together through humor, I think that that is something that we need to consider. When it comes to uh, humor in media, for me the question has always kind of come down, is it blasphemous? Is it something that really pokes fun at us as humans and our foibles, or does it make fun of God and our religion? And for me, it's always been somewhat a level of discomfort when it comes to those discussions about uh, things that I hold dear and that people are making fun of. Maybe it's because I don't know where they're coming from. Maybe it's because I don't quite understand the inspiration or the motivation for them to do or say what they say. And maybe it's on me to kind of take that into account going forward because if, for instance, people are making fun of religion in a way that I find to be disrespectful, where does that come from for them? And if it's coming from a place of pain or a place of hurt from somebody, is there an opportunity for me to reach out to them and try to figure out what's going on in their lives and try to help them. So while the first reaction is often uh, one of repulsion, I think that we as Christians always have the responsibility to kind of look deeper and try to figure out where things are coming from and try to explain what, why we think those issues are troublesome to us and to take the opportunity to explain our faith and use it as a way to hopefully get people to understand why what they're saying may be off the mark. I will concede that there are a lot of people who have done a lot of bad things in this world in the name of religion, in the name of God. They have caused pain. I think, and not to single out any particular church, but if you look at the, the priest scandals of the late 20th century in the Catholic Church, uh, and out of those instances come pain and I would not be surprised if for many of those people, there was a feeling that they needed to take revenge on the people who inflicted that pain. And that revenge would be inflicted not only on the people who represented that religion, but the religion itself. So I think it's important for us to kind of take a look at the broader picture. I think it's always important for us to kind of seek motivations. I think it's very easy for Christians to immediately say they're out to get us, that they're out to destroy us, that they're trying to demean our values. They may be trying to do that, but why? And if in finding out why, does that allow us the opportunity to, a little irreverent doesn't bother me that much, but if it's horribly irreverent, then I think the question becomes why? And what can we do to help address the pain that those attitudes often come from? Uh, this was gonna be another video, because uh, I had lots of videos for you. Uh, there was going to talk about the fact that sometimes laughter has a purpose. Sometimes it's important to understand what it can do for other people. In this case, it was a comedian talking about the fact that he went into a home for abused children, and he was very apprehensive about telling jokes because he thought that this was an audience of 
kids who have been abused and who have been neglected, who may not feel like laughing. But the lesson that he learned from that experience was that it allowed those kids to feel included. It allowed those kids to feel like they were part of something. It allowed those kids to feel like they weren't being ostracized just because of the pain they had felt in their lives, but it allowed them to laugh. And that laughter can be such a healing thing for people. So sometimes it's not just about how we react to laughter and how we react to humor, but it's also about how others react to what we do and what we say. And to understand that while, again, if we use those opportunities in a way that is negative, uh, that can cause deep and severe pain. I have a tendency, since I'm in full confessional mode today, I have a tendency to occasionally be a little sarcastic. I think it's good-natured sarcasm, occasionally even humorous. Sometimes it hurts people's feelings, and I don't know that. And I need to be cognizant of that. But by the same token where we can use humor in a negative way that affects people in a bad way, we need to find opportunities to make people laugh when they don't feel like laughing. We need to find opportunities to have people feel good about themselves because they're able to crack a smile. And one of the great joys in my life, and admittedly it doesn't happen nearly as often as I probably think it does, but one of the great joys in my life is to have people smile, to be able to say that you made that person feel a little bit about, better about things that day. So I think that we have to remember that it's not just laughter, it's not just about us uh, feeling good about ourselves, but also helping others feel better about themselves as well. That's the comedian in question, so don't worry about it. Uh, and lastly, because I, I probably am going to be a little bit short because I have lots of videos, uh, but I think the one thing that we need to keep in mind is that we should be joyful because of our Savior. Uh, in this verse that we have on the screen, it was right before his crucifixion, and Jesus was talking to his disciples who were overwhelmed with grief because they knew what was about to happen. And he wanted to assure them that he may be gone for a little while, but he was coming back. And in that return, that there would be such great joy there will be joy that we'll never be able to take away from those disciples. We are his disciples. And by the same token, we should experience the joy that will never be taken away from us. And the manifestations of that joy, I believe, are to share good feelings with others. That you're not much of a joyful follower of Christ if you're dour all the time, if you're negative all the time, if you're grumpy all the time, that I think it's important for us to make sure that we display through our lives the spirit of Christ. And, while, and part of that spirit is joy. Part of that spirit is the ability to make people understand that we are joyful people because we have a gift that is immeasurable. There is a gift that we get that will allow us to experience eternal and limitless happiness. So as we go forward and as we think about things, and I'm, 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 too, I'm not gonna get you out too early, uh, and as we think about things, I would like to suggest to you that we bring a little sunshine to people's lives and that we do that through humor and that we do that through the ability of helping people see the humor in situations. And even if it's situations that may make them a little uncomfortable initially, well, that might be okay. Because I think that we have the opportunity to show our joy and share our joy and to do that with people who may not otherwise get where that comes from. So I guess in the final analysis, my encouraging words to you is to find a time to laugh. Find a time of joy. Share that joy. And to, whenever possible, find the fun in your faith. So thank you for your time.